Welcome back. I'm now on location for this edition of Hometown in a very special place here in Newark at Winona's house. And here, I am joined by the organization's executive director, Kerry Lagoso, Ms. Sorrell. And as I understand, Kerry, it was a very eventful week for you as the state invested dollars, dollars that we thought might have been lost in the budget, back into your coffers. Great week, was it not? Absolutely, Matt. Uh, last year alone, in 2010, we were able to serve 660 children here at Winona's house, and we've only been able to do that with the support of our private and public partnership. Everything from the private corporations and foundations, individual donors, all the way up to the legislature, to our county executive, who's been a supporter since the inception of the program, and also to our governor, who as a former prosecutor and as a father, really understands the value of the work that we do and the results that we're able to obtain in a cost-effective and high-quality manner. First and foremost, paint the picture for us. Where are we right now? What we do day to day is we are the Child Advocacy Center for Essex County, New Jersey, which means that we serve child victims of sexual abuse, physical abuse, severe neglect, and witness to violence. And we coordinate um, everything from the prosecution and investigation services to the therapy and medical services. So both the investigation, prosecution, and then the healing aspects of child abuse. Now, how important is that one-stop shopping component for families when they walk through your door? Being co-located under one roof is tremendously important um, so that services are not fragmented. So what I mean is that from the time a child makes an allegation of abuse, we are able to rally the professionals who are specially trained to respond to child abuse and the trauma of child abuse to be under one roof so that a family only has to come to one centrally located, easily accessible, child-friendly place. And then we, the professionals, serve them seamlessly and efficiently and really high-quality services. So what are the numbers like? Are they ballooning? Have we plateaued? Are we decreasing? What is the workload like here at Winona's house? So we've seen numbers on the increase, and um, that's troubling. And also, I think it's two answers. It's troubling because the numbers are up, but I also think that it speaks to a previously unmet volume of need. So what I mean by that is we now have our hospital partner on site, Newark Beth Israel Medical Center. We have the Essex County Prosecutor. We have DIFUS. And as of July 1st, we even have a Newark Municipal Detective on site working the cases jointly. So I think as the municipal police are aware of that and as the public is aware of that and reaching out to DIFUS more freely, our numbers are up because we're receiving the children who should have been here from the beginning, getting the services that we provide. What would this community be like without a Winona's house? I think if this center wasn't here, uh, prosecution would still have to go on, and so would medical exams and therapy. The big difference is that they would no longer be coordinated with law enforcement, coordinated with Child Protective Services, so that the services would be splintered. And that's bad because it would negatively impact prosecution. Evidence collection wouldn't be as strong, and the teams working together just wouldn't be as coordinated. It's also bad for the families and the children because the more you ask of children and families in this already difficult situation, the harder it is for them to persevere and so there's higher levels of what's called recantation or uh, peeling back or changing their story and dropping out of the prosecution. And there's a lot higher incidence of families just falling off of the therapy uh, schedule and the medical schedule. So that's bad for children um, as far as healing is concerned. And as we talked about earlier, the challenge when you first started was getting people to walk through your doors. And I imagine that challenge continues today. Overall, how important is it to get that message out to the larger community about who you are, where you're located, and the resources that you provide? Absolutely, Matt. Um, I think, one, it's so important to convey the message to the community and to, you know, to children, to families, and to the police that we want to encourage children to come forward with allegations of abuse so that we can start the healing and, and prosecution process. But it's also so important to impress upon the children and families that they do not have to go to a police station. They do not have to go to the hospital to tell their story or to receive the services that they so badly need. That they can come to a community center, which is Winona's house, and they can be in a child-friendly environment and 
with people who are sensitive to what they've just gone through to receive their services. And this has been a very tough budget for a lot of organizations, not just Winona's House. But as I understand, there are some lessons learned from this experience and some lessons you're going to take away moving forward. Child abuse is not a partisan issue. Uh, and it should not be caught up in, in state budget either. So what we are taking away as a lesson and, and a message to the public is that we do need as much support from individuals and from corporations and foundations as possible so that our children who've already been victimized are not held hostage further by larger state fiscal crises. So what can people, families, children expect when they walk through your doors? Some of the success stories, that track record that really has elevated Winona's house to the top. So we have so many examples of hope and healing that have happened as a result of this program. Some tangible examples are, I'm thinking of families who came in here uh, having experienced the most horrific sexual abuse of their children. And as a result of meeting with our staff, they have gone through the prosecution process so that the perpetrator is now behind bars and serving time for the uh, atrocities that he did to the child. Uh, at the same time, the family, I'm thinking of a specific family, but there are many, and each story is unique, but there are common threads. The family went through therapy both of the child, individual, and group therapy, specific to the trauma that the child experienced. Siblings receive services because, as we know, child abuse directly impacts the child victim, but has a ripple effect on the entire uh, sibling group and also the parents. And what's important there is the parents are linked right on site to caregiver therapy so that they're able to understand what their child is going through and also heal themselves. So those are successes in and of themselves, but then on top of that, we have been able to bring in private dollars through Hedge Funds Care Foundation to support the hiring of a not-for-profit staff person who's a family advocate. And what Manuela Prince does as a family advocate is work specifically with each family on their unique needs. So she has done things like advocate for children at school, work with uh, the families in landlord-tenant court, get them the basic resources they need. And most um, hopefully and happily this summer, she's been able to work with a, a host of camps in the area to provide scholarships for 20 of our children, many of whom have never gone to camp in their entire lives, to go to either sleepaway camp or day camp. Uh, as clinically indicated, we've worked with the partners to make sure that the child, it's appropriate for them to be at camp and we've sent that many children to camp. And, and for us, that's huge because it allows children to just be children again. So where can we learn more about Winona's House, its programs and resources? Please visit uh, the Winona's House website at www.winona's house. It's W-Y-N-O-N-A-S as in Sam, house.org. And please also call us at our main number, 973-753-1110. We're also on Facebook. If, you are, uh, if you're on Facebook, please like us. We are Winona's House Child Advocacy Center. And you can also follow us with updates on Twitter. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for opening your doors to us and showing us some of the really, really important work that you guys do here. Well, thank you, Matt. We really appreciate you coming in and seeing our work and to helping spread the message. We appreciate it. Thank you again, and best of luck moving forward. All right, everyone, stay with us. Much more Hometown after this.